what uh, I mean, I think that it's important to because he's quoted quite extensively in that article to, to look at you know the full context of some of these quotes that have been uh, taken out in phrases when uh, at least in this instance there's an opportunity to see him uh, speak at length but he does want to see all right, folks, that's Jay Carney talking about uh, responding to a question about the president's uh, remarks on marijuana uh, given to the New Yorker magazine. Joining us now to talk about that and oh, so much more is uh, our friend Jennifer Rubin, columnist uh, and author of the Right Turn blog at the Washington Post. Hello, Jennifer. Hi, Steve. How are you? Good. How are you? You know, um, I'm so glad you wrote about this um, Obama's pot problem. Uh, I, I can't figure out his logic, and I guess it's because there is none. Uh, here's a guy who in his book admitted he did pot, so much so that got in the van with his friends that closed the windows. He he would steal the joint uh, when it wasn't his turn so he could get an extra hit um, and bragged about it. And now in this article, he, his, lo his logic is he hopes the legalization continues beyond Colorado and Washington State because there are, there's a disparity in, in the, the marijuana lockups and sentencing? I mean, I, I can't make heads or tails out of it. It's bizarre. On one hand, he informs us bizarrely that cigarette smoking um, is as bad as pot smoking, to which I wonder whether the limo driver at the White House is allowed to smoke pot before he drives the president around town. Uh, and then, as you point out, he seems to be in favor of further legalization, but his spokesman, the infamous Jay Carney, comes out and says, no, there hasn't been any change in policy. Yet if we take him literally and there's no difference or it's just as bad as cigarette smoking, why isn't pot legalized? Why isn't he in favor of this if this is his view? The whole thing smacks of rank pandering to the left and to young people who are completely disillusioned with this president. And I think this kind of talking in circles and really sort of posturing over issues that are not uppermost in uh, the voters' minds is a sign of kind of desperation. I think these people are floundering around looking for an I issue, looking for a way to re-engage their base, and this isn't going to help any. Yeah, and, and, and what he told his daughters was very... I mean, ambiguous when push comes to shove, uh, it's not a good thing to do. It's probably not healthy. You know, it's a waste of time. Uh, you know, but but on the other hand, as as you and I both interpreted, he's he's you know pushing for it to become legal in more states. So it's it's kind of a bizarre message to give your daughters too. I guess there's a different rule for the Obama children than for the rest <laughs> of us. Um, and by the way, somehow I don't think Michelle tells her kids merely that it's a waste of time and it's not healthy. I think she probably delivers a much stronger message, as would any parent, yeah. that this stuff is dangerous. Right now, at least, it's illegal, and you don't do this, um, and there'll be hell to pay if we find out that you have. Something tells me that that really is the message, and he has this incredible double standard, imagine this, um, for the way he expects his own kids uh, to behave and the way he expects others to behave. Yeah. And I think this is just rank hypocrisy. Yeah, I agree. We're talking to Jennifer Rubin of the Washington Post here on the Steve Molsberg Show. All right, Chris Christie, um, you wrote another great piece, Counterpunching Lessons, uh, talking about uh, how uh, the Christie folks are, are, are fighting back, uh, at least uh, when it comes to these uh, ancillary, uh, uh, you know, stories and accusations from uh, uh, one Democratic mayor in Hoboken, uh, it, it, particularly. Uh, they, they brought out another Democratic mayor to basically say he's been, you know, he's been fine with me. So uh, are, they, are they winning a little bit in their pushback? I think they are to a certain extent. Ultimately, this is going to turn on whether uh, the investigations, plural, turn up anything. If they do, he's toast. If they don't, uh, I think he will survive. I think what he is doing, however, should be eye-catching for all conservatives, and that is you have to take on the MSNBCs. You have to take on these smears quickly, effectively. They basically run a steam engine over this woman who comes up with this cock-and-bull story, no other mayor has had this experience. The people who were supposedly there never heard anything like this. And the Christie people have been relentless, just spilling out this information to the media, putting out statement after statement, uh, revealing inconsistencies in this woman, woman's story. And that's what all Republicans have to learn to do. Rather than whining about the mainstream media, which is biased, which is terribly unfair. They need to fight back. And regardless of what you think about Chris Christie, this is a tactic that all Republicans have to adopt, and that is 
you smear us, we're going to come after you with a baseball bat. And that's what they're doing. Yeah, and, and just uh, for those who don't know, um, on Saturday afternoon, Christie's uh, team, and you wrote about this in another article, uh, the scandal is MSNBC, and they wrote basically, MSNBC is a partisan network that's been openly hostile to Governor Christie and almost gleeful in their efforts attacking him, even taking the unprecedented step of producing and airing a nearly three-minute attack le- uh, ad against him this week. Uh, Governor Christie and his entire administration have been helping Hoboken, blah, 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 blah. Um, and so I, yeah, you're right, and it reminds me a little bit, I think the only other person and it, maybe it's not a, uh, a, a really sincere analogy, but uh, when Newt Gingrich, you know, mocked some of the uh, some of the people, the, the 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 moderators and questioners during some of the debates, at least in two debates, where he went after them for stupid questions or biased questions during the presidential uh, primaries. Yeah, I think for particularly for presidential candidates, you have to walk a fine line between not taking uh, incoming fire from these people and not lying down, and also appearing to be candid and not defensive. And uh, whether Newt Gingrich walked that line or whether Chris Christie is going to walk that line, but I think Republicans tend to err on the side of passivity. They tend to take much too much for too long before they respond. And by then, the public opinion has already been uh, set in stone. So what, again, whatever you think of Chris Christie, I think some Righteous indignation is important. And the other thing that he did is he's not saying this. He's having his staff do it. Right. He's going to rise above this, let his staff put out all the information, let them make the statements, let more responsible news outlets report it, and he's going to try to get back to the business of running the state. And I think that's the other part of it, and that is Republicans who are inundated by this stuff have to show that it's not going to keep them from governing. It's not going to keep them from their agenda. Uh, Another important lesson for conservatives who sometimes have the inclination to roll up in a little ball and uh, hide from the other side. Yeah, well, again, maybe we'll talk again before it, but uh, what, what, what do you look for in the State of the Union? I mean, do you expect that we'll be counting the times he attacks Republicans? Do you look for a divisive speech, uh, uh, a populist uh, speech? Because I, I can't see many uh, uh, accomplishments he's going to be touting. Yeah, I think it's going to be just more of the same. It's going to be the Republicans want you to drink dirty water, and right, right. Uh, we have a tradition in this country that we do things together, meaning government. Uh, the mean Republicans want to take away a health care plan that's given all these people new health insurance. It's going to be the same song and dance. He'll give short shrift to foreign policy, which is an absolute disaster area. He's going to propose a bunch more domestic spending. Not None of it is going to be uh, come to fruition in terms of uh, new legislation. Um, it's going to be a bore, and it's going to be about two and a half times too long. Uh, <laughs> so that's a really easy bet, because that's what I said last time, and I was right. I heard uh, uh, members of the administration, uh, whether they were on the record or off the record, basically saying when Israel reported that they broke up this terrorist plot in Tel Aviv at the U.S. Embassy, and it was al-Qaeda-linked, uh, the state, all of a sudden, they're, 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 the, the Obama administration is putting people out there to tell the press, well, not so fast. Maybe it really didn't happen that way. Yeah, we know Israel said it, but after all, you know, it's Israel. I mean, I, to me, I was, I, was, I was stunned. I never saw anything like that before. Yeah, they are increasingly anti-Israel. It's not something that they don't want to engage against Israel's enemies. I think they are anti-Israel. I think for whatever personal or ideological reasons, they see these people as a pain in the rear end. And they now have an agenda, which is to, um, first of all, vilify supporters of Israel in this country, which is about 60% or 70% of America. They want to undercut Israel's ability to defend itself. They want to foster the notion that it is Israeli intransigence that is keeping us from peace in our time in the Middle East. And this is just all of a piece with their real uh, concerted campaign against Israel, and I don't think that's going to go down well, uh, at least with the broader American people. Maybe that stuff plays well to the radicalized left-wing base, but Americans right. are essentially very pro-Israel. I hear you. Jennifer, thank you very much. Always great to talk to you. You too. Thank you, Jennifer Rubin, ladies and gentlemen. When we come back, um, we're going to have a, an interview with a gentleman named Steve Zeltzer, a filmmaker and from San Francisco. He doesn't like the fact that Google and the Silicon Valley companies, Facebook, Apple, are giving bus shuttle service to their employees. Wait till you hear this, Steve Malzberg Show. The Steve Malzberg.